What is the Great White Throne Judgment? It's time to unlearn the lies. Hey, welcome to Unlearn. My name is Lex, and I'd like to invite you to join us each week as we unlearn the lies and dig deeper into the truth of God's Word. Now let's get started. After the millennial reign, there will be a final resurrection in which all of the remaining dead will stand before the throne of judgment. This is often referred to as the Great White Throne Judgment. Then I saw a great white throne, and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works, by the things which were written in the books. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them. And they were judged, each one according to his works. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Those who were part of the first resurrection will not face the judgment, because they have already been given eternal life. And the Bible says, Over such the second death has no power. And Yeshua said, Those who belong to him will not face judgment. Most assuredly I say to you, He who hears my words and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, but is passed from death to life. However, the rest of the dead who were not part of the first resurrection will be raised up at the end of the thousand years for the resurrection of condemnation, in which they will be judged according to everything they have done. Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming in which all who are in their graves will hear his voice and come forth, those who have done good to the resurrection of life, and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. Those who have their name written in the book of life will be allowed to live, But anyone whose name is not in the book of life will be cast into the lake of fire. God is a just judge who renders righteous judgment. Those who are part of the resurrection of condemnation will be judged according to their works, their secret thoughts, and the things they said. But I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give account for it in the day of judgment. The wicked will be judged for the evil things they did. They will not be given everlasting life because the kingdom of God does not belong to sinners and lawless people. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. I find it interesting when sinners are offended at hearing that they will not enter the kingdom of God. Why should they care about entering the kingdom of God when they love the world so much? They don't love God, so why would they want to enter the kingdom of God? Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. If they had desired to be part of God's kingdom, they would have followed his laws. But they chose to live according to the desires of their flesh, obeying their own will rather than the will of God. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in the time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Should we be surprised that the unrighteous have no place in the kingdom of God? Yeshua said, Unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. The Bible says, Blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life. But it also says, The soul who sins shall die. This is why he who turns a sinner from the error of his way will save a soul from death. We must repent and turn away from our sin if we want to have everlasting life. Yeshua made an interesting statement about death, saying, Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. He's making a distinction between the first and second death. We all die the first death, but if we are counted worthy, we will not have to face the second death. We don't need to fear those who can kill only the body, but we do need to fear the one who can destroy both body and soul in Gehenna. We all face death, but we don't all have to face the second death. And as it is appointed for men to die once, but after this, the judgment. Death is the result of sin. Adam and Eve disobeyed God by eating the fruit which God said, In the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. 
God could not allow sinful humans to have eternal life, so he removed access to the tree of life. Then the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us, to know good and evil. And now lest he put out his hand and take also of the tree of life, and eat, and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him out of the Garden of Eden. God's grace prevents sinners from eating from the tree of life, so that they will not become immortal sinners. Many people have falsely thought that sinners will be eternally tormented in the lake of fire. But the Bible says that sinners will die. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Yeshua said that God will destroy both body and soul in Gehenna. The Bible never says that sinners will be kept alive eternally in a state of torment. It says the soul who sins shall die, and it calls this event the second death. The prophet Malachi explained that the wicked will be burnt up like stubble in the fire, and the righteous will trample on their ashes underfoot. For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, and all the proud, yes, all who do wickedly, will be stubble. And the day which is coming shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts, that will leave them neither root nor branch. But to you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness shall rise with healing in his wings, and you shall go out and grow fat like stall-fed calves. You shall trample the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet. On the day that I do this, says the Lord of hosts. There's a difference between eternal punishment and being tormented eternally. When a person is destroyed, his punishment is eternal, because he will never live again. However, that's quite different from saying he is tortured alive in the fire for eternity. The former is a final destruction that produces eternal results. The latter is never finalized because it's an active ongoing torment. Thus, eternal torment is a work that's never finished. Yet after the wicked are cast into the lake of fire, the Bible says, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. After the wicked are cast into the fire, the Bible says there shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor pain, because the former things have passed away. How can God say there shall be no more pain if the wicked are being tormented eternally? Likewise, if the wicked are alive in torment, how can he say the former things have passed away? Eternal life in torture, as terrible as that would be, is still eternal life. Yet the Bible consistently tells us that sinners will perish in the second death. The wages of sin is death, not eternal life in hell. The second death will be everlasting, because no one will return from it. The fire will destroy both body and soul, and nothing of them will endure. The punishment is eternal, because the second death is complete. Consider how even our own judicial system reserves the death penalty for the most severe crimes. When a criminal has been judged unworthy to ever enter back into society, prisons serve to keep criminals alive for the purpose of reform, so that after the sentence is over, they can enter back into society. But death is given to those whose offense is beyond reform. Likewise, there is no reason for God to keep sinners alive if there is no hope for reform. The Bible says that God takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked, and that He is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. We are His creation, and He wants to give us everlasting life. But He will not allow sinners to live forever. God is merciful and desires that all would repent. But His great mercy also allows the wicked to perish rather than suffer an eternal sin. We must not confuse torture with punishment. Torture is an act of cruelty, while punishment is an act of justice. We serve a loving and merciful Creator who does not take pleasure in the punishment of the wicked. The Son of God came to earth to die for the sins of the world, giving us every opportunity to repent and be saved. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. How horrible it would be for the righteous to watch their loved ones suffer for eternity. How could the living rejoice and have peace knowing that their loved ones were actively being tortured for all eternity? That would amount to a living hell for the righteous. I praise God knowing that the wicked will be destroyed and that the righteous will find comfort when death is no more. Once sinners are destroyed, God will wipe away our tears and we will rejoice in the kingdom of our God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Our sorrow will end when death has completed its work. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, then share it with your friends and family so they can unlearn the lies with us. If you want to see more videos like this one, subscribe to my channel. And I want to say a special thank you to those who support this ministry. We truly appreciate your prayers and your generosity. Thank you so much. And remember, the truth will set you free. We'll see you next time.